Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with spring lamb pan fried dumplings. That's right, Mary had a little lamb and not quite enough to make a main course for everyone. So what she did instead was make this very easy and very delicious appetizer featuring pan fried wonton stuffed with lamb and green peas. And by the way, I should have just called this video pan fried dumplings because some people don't like lamb and they might think they can't make this. But what you're about to see is really just a technique and you can stuff these with all kinds of meat and vegetables. But having said that, I love lamb. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with one pound of ground to which we will add some finely minced garlic as well as some finely sliced green onions or as we call them in the spring, spring onions. And then for color and a little bit of heat, I did some finely diced Fresno chilies, although just a regular sweet red bell pepper would work. And then besides the lamb, the other traditional spring ingredient we will add here are some green peas. And not only are lamb and peas great together, but they're both absolutely fantastic with mint, which is what we're gonna to use to flavor our dipping sauce later. But anyway, let's go ahead and season this up with some kosher salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, and of course a few shakes of cayenne. And then a little touch of one of the greatest lamb spices of all time, some ground cumin. And believe it or not, that's it for this very simple spring lamb and pea filling. And at this point, we'll take a couple forks and mix this up. But before we really start working that meat over, let's mostly stick to the surface and make sure all that stuff we tossed on top is sort of evenly distributed before we start working it in. And then once we feel like that's happened, we can be more aggressive and give this a thorough but relatively gentle mix. And if you're wondering why the forks and not just mash this all together with our hands, well, first of all, because I have to move a camera around, but also I think there's less chance of overworking the meat if we do it this way. Okay, a couple of nice cold pointy forks is always gonna result in less mashing of the meat than if we use our big hot sweaty hands. But no matter what you use, once that's mixed, we can theoretically use it right away. But like every other meat stuffing and filling in history, if we wrap this up in refrigerator for a few hours, those flavorings will have time to all meld together and we will probably end up with a better tasting product. And I say probably because I can't prove it, but probably. So I did wrap mine up and chill it for a few hours. And while we wait for that to get good, we can go ahead and mix up our dipping sauce, which is gonna be nothing more than some flavored rice vinegar, seasoned rice vinegar to be exact. And all we're gonna to add to that is a little bit of soy sauce, plus some freshly and very finely sliced mint. And that's it, we'll simply give that a stir and refrigerate until needed. And because lamb has that little bit of gaminess to it, and also tends to be quite rich, and by rich I mean there's gonna be a lot of melted fat in our dumpling, this vinegar-based dipping sauce is gonna be absolutely perfect. And that's it once our dip is done, and all those flavorings in our meat have been married. We'll go ahead and start filling some store-bought wonton wrappers, which once we open the package, we always wanna keep a damp paper towel over them so they don't dry out. And I also had a little ramekin of water nearby, not just to help me seal the wonton, but also because damp fingers don't stick to meat, which will make filling these a little easier. And what we'll do after placing in about two to three teaspoons of filling is go ahead and rub a little bit of water on those front two edges so that once we fold this over and give it a little bit of a press, hopefully those edges will seal nice and tight. And that's really all there is to these. All right, so really nothing too complicated. And while we're pressing and sealing, we're also attempting to squeeze out any of the air bubbles. Oh, and I forgot to mention, before we wrap all these up, it's never a bad idea to cook a little piece of the filling and check for seasoning, since pre-wrapping would be the time to adjust that. But anyway, once that was completed, I went ahead and did two more, since I think three of these is the perfect size for an appetizer. And then what we'll do once these dumplings are done is go ahead and pan fry those in a little bit of melted butter over medium heat for about three minutes per side or until our meat's cooked, and these are beautifully golden brown. So I gave that first side about three minutes and went ahead and flipped them over. And by the way, if we have kids watching, or adults, maybe use a spatula and tongs to flip these and not spatula and finger, because these can and will feel like burning. And at this point, everything was going so well until I decided to flip these back over to give this side a little more color. And I realized these were starting to spring open. All right, when you use a raw meat filling, it's gonna release a lot of juices and melted fat that's gonna to try to force its way out of the dumpling. And because I use water to seal these and not egg wash like I was supposed to, as you can see, especially on this one, I had total separation. Oh yeah, that dumpling was made by someone that spent two years of culinary school. 
But in fairness, if you make the dough yourself for these wrappers, then usually a little bit of water will seal these properly. But anyway, as you well know, we never let the food win. So once I thought these were done, and that meat was kind of springing back to the touch, I went ahead and pulled these off the heat, and I served them up. And then after wasting a few seconds trying to arrange them, I placed some of our vinegar dipping sauce nearby, and I went in for a taste, which despite my separation issues, really was incredibly flavorful and delicious. And while the combination of our simple lamb and pea filling with our mint-infused vinegar really was tremendous, I was not trying to make spring lamb pan-fried tacos. Okay, I wanted dumplings. All right, good old-fashioned, fully sealed dumplings. So I decided to make some more, this time using some egg wash, like I should have done in the first place. And then once we painted the edges with that, we'll go ahead and place in some filling, this time using a couple spoons, since you don't want to be dipping your fingers in the egg. Plus, as you can see, the spoons work really well. And that's it, we'll just go ahead and fold this the same way we did the first batch. Except when you use an egg wash, as it dries, it gets extremely sticky, which is why it makes such a perfect edible glue. Although one tip here, we do want to let these rest for a little bit, so our egg glue has time to set. Okay, it doesn't have to be too long, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And yes, of course you can make these ahead and keep them in the fridge. And that's it, once I have three done with the egg wash, I went back to the stove and cooked them in the exact same way. And again, to defend myself a little bit with the first batch, if you make your own fresh wonton dough, just a little bit of water on the edge will generally seal them sufficiently. But as you saw with these store-bought ones, that was not the case here. But anyway, I feel like one of my jobs here is to make these kind of mistakes so you don't have to. And once you've cooked long enough and make enough mistakes, it barely even bothers you anymore. So I went ahead and browned those up on both sides. And I went ahead and served those up once again with our dipping sauce. And not only did these look better, but they actually tasted better because none of our lamb juices and flavorful melted fat leaked out. Which reminds me, if you don't absolutely love lamb, do these with another meat. All right, because of the way these are constructed, all that lamb fat is gonna be trapped inside these, which is where almost all the richness and a lot of that subtle gaminess flavor comes from. So this technique is really great if you love lamb, but if you don't, instead of lamb and peas, you could go with ground beef and sauteed mushrooms, or maybe ground chicken and green chilies, or Italian sausage and caramelized onions. Okay, so please remember, this is just a technique, and you can make these with whatever you want. I mean, you are after all the Tennessee Williams of your pan dumpling fillings. Oh, and speaking of playwright, to play these right, if you do change the filling, you may want to change your dipping sauce. Okay, mint is absolutely perfect with lamb and peas, but maybe not so much with beef and mushrooms. But no matter what you decide to stuff into these easy to make pan fried dumplings, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.